the biggest question that you will be facing over the next two years is the question of affordability. Affordability of your home, affordability of your home, cars, transport, etc. Transport. We call them GLEs, general living expenses. Now, what's actually happening and what seems to be taking place is that people are modifying their behaviour fairly quickly in relation to the, the rise of interest rates, what they call the uh, interest rate cliff that is currently in process um, of happening uh, over the next six months. There's a lot of properties that come off uh, the fixed rate uh, interest rates and going back onto variable. Now, what does that do? Well, if the stats are right, the stats tell me that a very, very large percentage of those people have high disposable incomes, which basically means they'll curb their retail spending and they'll put more more money into keeping their mortgage going. Well, will that make many people relinquish their homes and put their homes on the market to sell? If the percentage of of the high income people that have mortgages is is noteworthy or it's true, then the chances are that it won't really have a lot of an effect. So in looking at that forwardly though, what we have become conscious of is that we've become conscious of where we're spending our money and what we're doing with it. And one of the concentrations that we've seen drop off a little bit in Melbourne and in the regional areas is the investment buying. The investment buying has slowed up a little bit, even though the rental yields or the, the rent prices seem to be uh, increasing still, but the yields still aren't great in comparison to the sale price or the purchase price of the home, apartment, townhouse, whatever. Now, so where does that lead in relation to affordability? Well, we are finding that a lot of people are moving to the outer per perimeters of Melbourne, Sydney, uh, Brisbane, Perth, basically for affordability and land costs, because land cost is a lot lower. What we're also seeing, though, is we're seeing people for the first time in a very, very long time change their requirement of what they desire to live in due to affordability. So we're finding the, these, this becoming more uh, more common. People, There's more people willing to live in a cabin type setup than what there ever has been beforehand. So you can buy portable cabins and put them on your block of land. The second thing is dual key homes where you have one one roof line, but you basically have two homes under the one roof line. So dual key homes seem to be coming back. They seem to be gaining um, gaining in popularity again. Uh, and they went through a, a real strong burst about 10 years ago. And that seems to be coming back. So people are sacrificing the living space area to make sure that they can still acquire a home. So from an affordability point of view, they are giving up, if you want to call it, a larger product for a smaller product, but making sure they can still buy a product. So that's one of the things that we've noticed overall. What we've also noticed is this, is, is that the ability to be able to purchase something new has also forced people into cabins and the one thing I forgot to mention are kit homes. So and the reason the reason that people have also gone for them is that they are very quick to erect. So a kit home can take up to six to eight weeks to actually fabricate from start to finish. And a cabin can take two weeks by the time it's mounted, connected, etc. So you're actually getting a home in a much quicker period of time. So the market emphasis now or by demand has shifted slightly, gone out a little bit further as it's been happening over the last sort of five years or so, and especially through the COVID, the COVID uh, stages since December 2019. And but we that push is still going. So we're finding people still looking at these sort of things. Cabins, kit homes, dual key homes. So therefore, two families can actually live under the one roof. So in that case, if you are looking to invest dollars one of the things I'd strongly suggest that you look at is the cabin park type setup. And it may be that you actually acquire the cabin and lease the land or that you acquire both land and cabins. And here at BivCorp, we'll be sending or we'll be selling um, cabins, house and land packages shortly down in the regional Gippsland areas. So we've also had some fairly strong inquiry 
just purely on the land that we've already pre-purchased, where people are saying, look, we heard that you're building a type of a cabin park type setup. What amenity will be in there? Um, we're not looking for it as a holiday type setup. We're actually looking at it as permanent residency. So there has been a very strong shift in that. It's something really to take note of. So I would suggest any of those regional, especially those regional oceanic type areas, you know, that are on the beach side, on the beach, they're the ones that really, where people are looking for a better lifestyle, a quieter lifestyle and a cheaper lifestyle, but also a lifestyle that can be brought forward a lot quicker due to the amenity and the quickness of building kit homes and cabins. Thanks for listening. See me.